So far, we've looked into two ways of representing a signal. We could plot a signal with its amplitude on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis, or for sinusoidal signals only, we could represent it as a phaser and plot it in the phaser diagram. This one was defined for one frequency only. We could mo plot multiple phasers, but they all had to be at the same frequency. Now there is a third way of representing a signal and plotting it, and that is the Fourier series. Again, we start out with a signal defined as a function of time, v, t. It could be a voltage here, as we would very often see in practice. Now the definition of the Fourier series says that you can represent that voltage as a DC value, as a coefficient A0, that's the same as the mean value as we've seen already before, as we also can see from its derivation down here. A0 is the integral from 0 down to the end of the periodicity over the whole signal over time. And at the end, we average it, we divide it by the period time t. That gives us the first Fourier coefficient, the A0, the offset, the mean value, the average value. Same thing, different names. Now there is more to that. There are the so-called harmonics. The harmonics are represented as a weighted summation with the weighting factors being AN and BN in the Fourier series, and it's the weighted summation of cosines and sines, which sum up from N equals 1, which is the fundamental, some also call it the first harmonic, all the way until infinity, and we derive the coefficients AN here and BN which again are integrals over the signal, but this time the original signal v as a function of time is multiplied with the cosine waveform that has the nth frequency at the nth Fourier coefficient. We integrate again over time, and we integrate from zero until the period time t, so over one period only, and at the end we average it and compare it to the mean value, we now also multiply with a factor of two. Similarly for the Bn Fourier coefficient, instead of multiplying the original signal v as a function of time with the cosine wave, it's a sine wave down here, but again at the nth frequency for the nth harmonic and then we average over time after we've integrated from zero until the period time t and we multiply by a factor of two. Omega again is two times pi times the fundamental frequency which was also the fundamental frequency one over the period time of the original signal and n is a counter here is a normal number. Now that was one way of defining the Fourier series. Another way is by the words. The meaning of the Fourier series in words is that you can use any repetitive signal. So now it's not sine waves anymore. It's any repetitive signal. Here defined a V as a function of time that can be represented by a superposition, by the summation of an offset, that's our DC value, A0, a single fundamental, and its harmonics. The fundamental is a sinusoidal waveform with the same frequency, F0, as our original signal, or the period time, period rate, T, or is 1 divided by the original frequency, the lowest frequency occurring in the signal, as the frequency of the original signal. 
Now these harmonics are all sinusoidal waveforms and they are all occurring at the multiples of the frequency of the original fundamental. The Fourier series consists of an offset, a DC value, average value, mean value, we had those terms already previously, and then there is the fundamental, which is represented by the first A1 coefficient, the first A Fourier coefficient, and the first B Fourier coefficient as a weighted function of a cosine at the original frequency plus a sine wave at the original frequency of the original signal. And then on top of that, we sum up, we add up the harmonics, which are again per Fourier coefficients at the end harmonic, but now at different frequencies at the n times the original frequency, both for the sine wave and for the cosine wave in here. And then the B coefficient of the Fourier coefficients is weighting the sine waves, whereas the A coefficient is weighting the cosine waves. A third way of explaining this topic is by looking at each of those signals each of those waveforms on its own and then superimpose them graphically. So here we have A0 being the DC offset of a signal and the offset level is just randomly chosen here as an example for a representation of a signal. Then we take the first harmonic and we have the cosinusoidal representation with the, with the amplitude A1 and add that up to the original DC offset. Then we keep adding up. We add up a sine wave, which is, has the amplitude of B1. And then we add up the next harmonic. We are back to a cosinusoidal waveform again with the amplitude of A2 and we add up a sinusoidal waveform with the amplitude of B2, then comes a, a, a cosine with the amplitude of A3, a sine wave with the amplitude of B3, and so on. Note also, whenever we increase the index here from one to two in this example here, we increase the frequency by a factor of the original fundamental frequencies. So this is the original period here and now we already have two maximums until the signal repeats again before we reach the period time t. Now summing all these signals up all the way up to infinity gives us our original signal as a function of time. Another way of visualizing that is at Wikipedia. If you look up the Fourier series at Wikipedia, there is a three-dimensional diagram with the time and the frequency on the x and y axis and the amplitudes on the z axis. Now let's have a look into some of the examples. A DC value is one of the most simplest representations of the Fourier series. And if we have a DC value here, the A0 is actually representing the mean value of the signal, the original signal itself, and we don't have to add up any harmonics. So A0 is the original amplitude of the signal and all the other harmonics, all the sine waves and the cosine waves are weighted with, with zero for all n that are occurring. Another example is using a sine wave only, and as a sine wave only is a direct part of the Fourier series. It's very straightforward to read that one out. It doesn't have an offset. It's centered around the, the x-axis. All the contributions from all of the cosines of all ends, a's are zero, 
and all the harmonics of the sine waves are also zero and we have only the fundamental sine wave weighted by its amplitude factor v hat which is the amplitude of the signal in the time domain. Similarly for a cosinusoidal waveform here, again we have a cosinusoidal waveform with the amplitude of v hat without any DC offset, the signal is centered along the time axis. That means the DC value, the mean value, the average value of the signal is zero. All the sinusoidal contributions to the Fourier coefficients are weighted with zero. All the Bs are therefore zero. And the uh, signal is represented by one cosinusoidal coefficient only that is the first Fourier coefficient for all the cosinusoidal representations for all the so, uh, summation cosines which is represented with the amplitude of the original signal v hat and all the other cosinusoidal weighting factors are also zero. Now looking at another waveform which is sharing some of the attributes of a cosinusoidal waveform. The attribute it's sharing with the cosinusoidal waveform is that it's symmetrical along the y-axis here. So the distance from the rising edge of this pulse to the y-axis is the exact same as the distance of the falling edge over here to the y-axis of the signal. That means it can be represented by a superposition of only cosinusoidal waveforms and all the sinusoidal contributions are zero. The factors weighting the cosinusoidal contributions in the Fourier series AN are calculated by running the integral that we've previously seen. And by running that integral, you multiply a cosinusoidal signal with the original signal as defined in the time domain and you result into this equation here for all a n and as we can see that signal also has an offset the offset value is simply represented by the area the signal has above the time axis which is this one here and that has a width and a height the height is v hat, the width is defined as a w in this case here. And as we are averaging the DC value over time, over one length of a period, we have width times v hat, the amplitude of the signal, and average it by the uppercase t, the period of time. And if width is given in seconds, then the period time is also given in seconds and the resulting unit is volts only, which is correct for a voltage signal. As the pulse was an equivalent signal to a cosine waves, just multiples on top of each other, summing them up at each of their frequency here, this square wave here is very close to a sinusoidal waveform as it is symmetrical to the origin of the coordinate system. This is a synergy it is sharing with a sinusoidal waveform. Sinusoidal waveforms are also symmetrical to the origin of the coordinate system. That means that all the Fourier coefficients being multiplied with the cosinusoidal waveforms are zero and the uh, and only the sinusoidal coefficients, the sinusoidal weighting coefficients, contribute to the signal. Now this one does not have any offset here, so the uh, DC value, the mean value, the average value of the signal is zero. And note also that all the even harmonics are zero for the weighting coefficients of the sine waves. Here m is an element of the natural numbers, so 2 times m is always an even number, and for those even numbers, 
b is always zero where two times m again m being an element of the natural numbers two times m would be even and if i subtract one from an even number i always get an odd number and for those elements the contribution of the fourier series is given by the bn coefficients here another waveform which is symmetrical to the v-axis to the voltage axis on the y-axis is the triangular waveform given in the left figure here that means again all the sinusoidal contributions of the Fourier series are multiplied with zero so they are not existing the signal does not have a DC offset it is has the same amount of area above the time axis as it has below the time axis within one period so all that integral is canceling out to zero and only the a coefficients weighting the cosinusoidal waveforms are contributing in this case the even harmonics for the cosinal contributions are also zero again m is an element of the natural numbers and 2 times m would always be an even number so if n is 1 2 times 1 is 2 when n is, is 2 2 times 2 is 4 if n is 3 2 times 3 is 6 and so on which is always an even number all of these are zero and only the odd numbers 2 times a natural number minus 1 is giving odd numbers only the odd numbers are contributing with this amount of amplitude for each of their cosinusoidal waveforms at the nth harmonic this sawtooth waveform has an offset the offset is the integral for over the signal from 0 until the period t which in this case is the area of the triangle here and that triangle has a width which is the uppercase t and it has a height which is the value v peak here and as we calculate the area of a triangle as the width times the height and divide by 2 we have the area being v peak times uppercase t and the average a value is at the end dividing with the uppercase t at the period t it's averaging across the time of one period so the uppercase t goes out and we are left with v peak divided by 2 as the offset as the dc value of this signal all the cosinusoidal contributions to the fourier series are zero in this case and the sinusoidal contributions are here represented for both the odd and the even numbers so for all numbers and are given by this equation for this given signal on the left side in electronics we are often using sine waves for various purposes and the most famous sine wave that we are dealing with is the grid voltage here and in many cases we rectify this grid voltage to turn it from from an ac into a dc and the first step of rectification would be to pass the signal to a full bridge rectifier which is four diodes connected in a way that only positive voltages pass through and all the negative parts of a signal get flipped over on the time axis and contribute positively so this one here is the flipped over contribution towards the positive axis of a sine wave and that one was the part that was originally positive already for this signal we have an offset we wanted to convert it from ac into dc in the first place so we are glad that we have a dc at the output which is represented here and then we have contributions only from the cosinusoidal coefficients 
the cosinusoidal weighting coefficients of the Fourier series a n where n is only defined for the even harmonics here the odd harmonics are all zero both for a n and all of the sinusoidal contributions to the Fourier series are also zero. A poor man's rectifier is a single diode only so if you pass a sinusoidal signal to a single diode only uh, that means the upper half of the sinusoid would only pass through which is this area here that is getting through a diode versus the lower case everything that is below the axis would just simply be chopped off and not be passed through the output this signal is also giving us a dc offset but you can see already here we are missing the factor of two compared to the last signal we have because we only pass half of the sinusoidal waveform through the coefficients again are a n which is the even harmonics of the cosinusoidal contributions only which are non-zero the odd harmonics weighting the cosinusoidal waveforms of the Fourier series here are zero but in this case we also have a single contribution from a sinusoidal waveform which is the sinusoidal waveform at the original fundamental frequency indicated by the index one here so the sinusoid waveform with the period of the original frequency is contributing to the summation of the Fourier series with the amplitude of half the peak voltage of the original signal all the other sinusoidal contributions are zero